In collaboration with my sponsor NextPCB, I have developed a shield for the Arduino Mega, Duo or Giga. The purpose of the board is to display the switching states of the input and output pins. For the first time, I made use of the next PCB assembly service with this board, so that I didn't have to solder the SMD components myself. In course of the video, I will show you how the assembly service works and what needs to be taken into account. Only the components for through hole mounting still needs to be soldered. These are essentially the pin headers with which the board can be plugged onto the Arduino and at the same time other boards can be stacked on top of the shield. I created the design of the circuit board using the KiCad software in version 7. NextPCB is a sponsor of this open source project to create professional layouts of electronic circuit boards and so helps that this software can be continually developed further. The documentation for KiCad is also at a high level and together with the large community, this program is a good choice to enter the world of printed circuit boards. In terms of circuitry, my project is anything but complex. It only involves 70 LEDs, each of which is connected via a 1kOhm series resistor between the 70 GPIOs and ground. The LEDs can be deactivated in groups via 8 jumpers. With the integrated 3D viewer, you get a good impression of what the finished board will look like. This makes it easy to check not only the components, but also the correct labeling. After the layout has been completed, the files required for production must be exported from KiCad, which can be done quite quickly using the Fabrication Outputs menu item. Don't forget to run the Design Rule Checker to see whether all components are connected properly. Manual rework is only required for the list with the builds of material, which is essential for the assembly service. This is a table in CSV format that must be edited using an appropriate program such as LibreOffice. NextPCB offers a template on its website that must be filled with a list of your components. A DNP for do not populate can also be entered to indicate that these parts should not be placed on the board by next PCB. Here, this is the case for the through hole components. The files generated in this way are required for the order. NextPCB offers an online via for Gerber files on its website. After uploading the zip package with the files, the board can be checked in your browser. The dimensions are extracted and the manufacturing price for a single board without assembly is calculated. If everything is as it should be, the ordering process can be started with one click on the button. On the page that now appears, various parameters can be set such as the number of pieces required or the color of the board. If, as in my case, not only the circuit board is to be created, but also populated, further steps must be completed in the online shop. The files with the positions of the components are required. and the table with the components to be used must be uploaded. A total price will then be sent upon request. After completing the order, NextPCB checks the board for correctness. This only checks whether the circuit board can be manufactured as specified by you, not whether you have created any logical errors in your layout. If there is nothing to complain about, the board goes into production. You can monitor the progress of production on the manufacturer's website. Once the PCB is finished, next step is the assembly. 
you have to confirm this process again after the first circuit board has been manufactured. The remaining production steps can also be followed online. Only a few days have passed from the idea to a computer design to a package containing almost fully assembled circuit boards. The SMD, LEDs and resistors are precisely soldered to the circuit board. The labels are clear to read, which is also true for the graphics I have added. What is still missing are the components for through hole mounting. Additional pin headers that are plugged onto the pins help to align the pin headers correctly when soldering. Thanks to the soldering mask, the components are soldered very quickly, even with the many pins being close together. With the clear labeling, errors in this final production step are virtually impossible. Whether everything works as intended can be seen after plugging the shield onto an Arduino Duo board and writing a few lines of code. For the assembly I choose green LEDs and indeed, all pins are connected correctly. The SMD LEDs shine brightly, even with just 3.3V from the Arduino Duo. I would like to use the board to illustrate some basics of microcontroller programming. Thanks to the pin headers, another board can be attached on top of the shield to demonstrate basic circuits in coming tutorials. These will appear on my second channel, Homo Fazians. If you have own ideas that require a fully assembled professional board or just a PCB that you can solder yourself, take a look at the website of my sponsor NextPCB. More infos and many high resolution photos of the PCB are available on the pages of How Open Is This Gadget? Have a click! Thanks for watching and I'll be back!